Thank you. Uh, I'm going to engage in a little civil disobedience and actually, in addition to talking about K through 12, talk uh, more, more broadly about some of the White House initiatives related to uh, engineering. Um, and in the uh, three hours that Daryl has graciously given me, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to cover uh, some of the research initiatives uh, that have engineering at the core, uh, some of the very exciting things that the National Science Foundation is doing on uh, entrepreneurship education and some of our efforts to spread that. Uh, we recently announced that we are going to have a, a White House Maker Fair, and I wanted to tell you about that and how you can get involved. Uh, the, the actual topic of this panel, which is uh, engineering, uh, putting the E in STEM in the uh, K through 12 context, uh, and some of the things that we're also encouraging and promoting at the undergraduate engineering level. Uh, and my main topic, uh, my main purpose for giving this talk, in addition to letting you know this, is that we really need your help. Uh, that there are some things that the federal government can do, uh, but all these things are going to require what President Obama calls an all hands on deck effort. We need to have the federal agencies, uh, universities, companies, nonprofits, philanthropists, and foundations, uh, skilled volunteers, if we're going to make progress on any of these issues. So I'm hoping that. Uh, we will uh, identify some engineering deans who would be willing to uh, take the lead on, on some of these efforts and to join those activities where something is already going on. Um, so I wanted to start off by uh, reminding you what the president's uh, overall innovation strategy is. Uh, basically, there are three components. The first is investing in the building blocks of long-term economic growth and job creation, uh, like uh, research, uh, STEM education, and infrastructure. Uh, both traditional infrastructure and high-tech and high-tech infrastructure like broadband. The second is to create the right environment for private sector investment. So, for example, we've been able to uh, work with the Congress to pass legislation that will allow for equity-based crowdfunding and make it easier for companies to raise capital. And finally, harnessing innovation for national priorities, whether it's allowing Americans to lead longer, healthier lives or making the transition to a low-carbon economy. One of the elements of this, uh, this, uh, this focus on innovation nat for national priorities is identifying a series of uh, grand challenges. So I'm going to talk about uh, what we're doing on the, grand on the grand challenges front, but some of the other multi-agency uh, research initiatives that really have engineering at the core are uh, an effort in uh, cyber-physical systems, uh, robotics, uh, which the president announced uh, at a speech that he gave at uh, Carnegie Mellon University in June 2011, uh, looking at the intersection between engineering and biology, um, the uh, Advanced Manufacturing and uh, National Network for Manufacturing Innovation, which you heard about from our previous speaker, uh, the Materials Genome Effort, uh, which is an effort to reduce by at least 50 percent the time and cost associated with uh, discovering, developing, and, and making uh, new materials, uh, and an effort in big data. Uh, how do we go from data to knowledge to action uh, as we're uh, coping with the explosion in both the volume and, and variety of, of data? So uh, on the grand challenges front, uh, a, a grand challenge is uh, an ambitious but achievable goal that has the potential to inspire the public. Uh, and get them excited about science and technology. Some, some uh, historical examples are President Kennedy's decision to put a man on the moon, uh, or uh, the, more recently the Human Genome Project, uh, where we've lowered the cost of sequencing the human genome from 100 million to 1,000. Uh, last year, the President announced something called the Brain Initiative, uh, uh, brain research through ad, uh, advancing innovative neurotechnologies. Uh, the Department of Energy has a grand challenge called Sunshot, where the goal is to make uh, solar as cheap as coal. Um, some examples of the private sector embracing grand challenges are uh, Google is working on a self-driving car, uh, which is an outgrowth of an earlier uh, DARPA grand challenge. IBM has been driving advances in AI um, by beating Gary Kasparov at chess and Ken Jennings at Jeopardy. Uh, and Elon Musk has said, I want to die on Mars, but not on impact. Uh, uh, so his, his uh, modest grand challenge is making uh, humanity a, a, 
a multiplanetary species. Um, so what are the ways in which uh, the engineering community has stepped up to the plate on this is working with the uh, National Academy of Engineering uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, the great work that uh, the, the late Chuck Vest was doing in this area is to create a Grand Challenge Scholars Program, which is allowing undergraduates to organize their research, their coursework, their service learning, and their international experience around one of the 14 uh, grand challenges that have been identified by the National Academy. There are 14 universities that are participating already. Uh, we would love to, uh, as part of an event that we'll, we hope to be doing later this year, highlight uh, a, a collective commitment uh, from the uh, 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 engineering colleges across the United States to increase the number of undergraduates who have an opportunity to participate in a program like this. Uh, entrepreneurship education. Um, there is a great program that I, I hope Promode will, will talk uh, more about this afternoon, uh, which is allowing scientists, engineers, and, and entrepreneurs uh, to uh, learn about um, the, the process of uh, starting up a company and the uh, companies that, uh, the universities that are participating in this, including University of Maryland uh, and, and others, uh, Georgia Tech, uh, uh, the uh, scientists and engineers that are participating in this are really learning a lot about the process associated with creating a new venture. And that this is something that we're uh, very interested in, in scaling up. So. I hope you will uh, learn more about that and, and how you and, and your faculty and graduate students and postdocs can get involved. Um, we, uh, last week we announced that the uh, White House was going to have the first uh, ever uh, Maker Faire. Uh, and you see uh, uh, the President and Joey Hudy, who's uh, a, uh, now a 16-year-old intern at Intel, developed an uh, extreme marshmallow cannon uh, which, much to the delight of the uh, Secret Service, uh, <laughs> fired a uh, marshmallow across the state dining room 180 feet. Uh, and uh, Joey's just one of a number of uh, uh, young boys and girls who are getting interested in uh, designing and making things that are a personal interest to them. Uh, how, many, how many deans have been to a Maker Faire or a Mini Maker Faire? All right, homework assignment for everyone. Um, uh, so essentially what has happened is you have the really uh, dramatic democratization of the tools that are necessary to design and make uh, just about anything. And you see this um, in, in maker spaces and fab labs and in tech shops. Uh, and we think that this could have a big impact uh, not only in getting more young boys and girls excited about STEM, uh, but also uh, in terms of encouraging uh, entrepreneurship in, in manufacturing and, and hardware. So uh, some of the universities uh, that are already in, engaged in this effort, uh, Georgia Tech has uh, something called the Invention uh, Studio that I've blogged about that is run by their undergraduates. Uh, BU has uh, created something called the uh, Epic Studio uh, focused on uh, product innovation. Uh, UC Berkeley uh, recently announced the Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation. Uh, MIT has said that they will now begin to accept a maker portfolio as part of the application process. Uh, so we think that there's a lot of things that uh, colleges and universities are already doing, but again, uh, we would, we're going to have an event uh, later this year and we would love to highlight uh, additional steps that universities can take to in encourage and promote this and if you have thoughts uh, or questions and you'd like to get involved, you can drop us a note at uh, maker at ostp.gov. Um, switching to the K through 12 side, we have an effort called uh, 100K and 10, uh, which is about preparing and recruiting 100,000 high quality math and science teachers over the next 10 years. Um, and uh, what my colleagues are gonna be talking about uh, we're very excited about uh, the conversations that Daryl and others of his colleagues have been helping to lead around uh, an AP engineering uh, course. Uh, the White House believes that this is an important opportunity to add the E in STEM and increase student awareness of engineering. Um, 
We, as you know, we have a very decentralized system in the U.S. with 15,000 different school districts, uh, and uh, an, an AP engineering course is one of the few initiatives that we can take that I think would really have uh, a, a national impact. But as uh, you'll hear from Ajita, the uh, support from engineering deans is going to be critical to, to getting this off the ground. Um, and something that I, I'm sure Joan will talk uh, more about is uh, 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 some efforts we have underway to uh, encourage more uh, uh, undergraduate students that show up intending to get a STEM degree or an engineering degree to actually complete. Um, building on a PCAST report, we have a goal to increase the number of uh, STEM graduates by a million. Um, and again, there's some exciting things going on. So uh, recently, uh, the Helmsley Foundation and HHMI, between the two of them, are investing $95 million to increase retention of uh, STEM students. Uh, and uh, NSF, under uh, Jones' leadership, has done a great job partnering with companies like GE and Intel on a graduate 10K initiative. Uh, and uh, as Daryl mentioned, uh, uh, President Obama, this is something that uh, President Obama had an opportunity to meet with a number of you at, uh, at the White House. Uh, and there are uh, commitments that are growing out of 60 companies to double the number of undergraduate STEM internships that they offer, particularly in the uh, early years, so that they have an opportunity to see what types of job opportunities this will lead to. So those are uh, uh, a couple of the things that, that we have going on, but there's a lot that, uh, that university leaders can do, whether it's putting um, education reform at the center of their, their capital campaign and their fundraising efforts. So uh, things uh, like uh, my, our former uh, colleague, uh, Nobel laureate Carl Wyman, helped to lead at uh, UC Boulder and University of British Columbia. Um, increasing the emphasis that teaching plays in uh, recruiting tenure and promotion. Uh, and uh, the, national, uh, the National Science Foundation supported the development of a National Academy study on discipline-based education research that does a good job of summarizing what we now know about teaching and learning. Uh, and there's still a very large gap between what the literature tells us and what we actually see happening in the classroom. So organizing some workshops so that more uh, faculty and department chairs and deans are aware of this research, I think would be a great thing to do. So um, I know that was a lot of territory to cover uh, in uh, a short period of time. Uh, and I want to thank the indulgence of the chair for allowing me to c cover some non-K through 12 issues in addition to K through 12. Uh, but we really do need your help if we're going to make progress on these. And I would be very interested in growing the coalition of engineering schools that are, are directly involved in these initiatives. Thank you very much.